Hi everyone and thanks for joining me today. So today what we're going to do is we're going to look at layer 3 router concepts and in particular we're going to create a simple IP network, we're going to configure some IP addresses on both end devices and on the router and we're going to observe the routing table in a router. So let's get started guys. So I'm going to bring you right from the very beginning. So I'm going to pop in some end devices, some PCs onto my screen. So pop in a couple of PCs here. I'm also going to grab in, let's see, we're gonna grab in four PCs. And then what we're going to do, guys, is we're gonna grab in two switches. Okay, so our switches are layer two devices that are used to transmit and receive frames. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop in our layer three device. And in this case, I'm gonna use a 1941 router. So what I now need to do is I need to connect these up. So in order to do that, I'm going to use a copper straight through cable to connect um, the devices. So I'm going to use fast Ethernet that's absolutely perfect to connect my end devices, my PCs to the switch here. Um, and again, I'm not too concerned which port they're going into on the particular switch ports. Um, however, what I will say is that I am going to use in a moment, I am going to use gigabit speeds to connect to my switch. So again, here's a gigabit ethernet port up to the gigabit ethernet port here on my router. And also I'm gonna do the same on this switch here. So what I've now got folks is I've got a, if you like, two small local area networks interconnected with a layer three router. And what I now need to do is I need to decide on a networking, an IP addressing scheme. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a network here. So let's call this network one. And let's say this network one is on the 192.168.1.0 slash 24 subnet. So what does that slash 24 mean? It means CIDR notation with a slash 24 mask. So in dotted decimal notation, that's 255. 255.255.0, okay? And on this side, guys, what I'm gonna do is something similar. I'm gonna set up another network. So in this case, it's gonna be network two. On this side, again, I'm gonna use 192.168, but I'm gonna say on this side, I'm gonna say 50.0 slash 24. So these are two separate networks. So again, the subnet mask in dotted decimal would be 255.255.255.0. So now, guys, what we've got is we've got a, basically we've got two networks, one here on the left and one here on the right. And basically what we're gonna do is wanna use this router to route between these networks. Now what I now need to do is I need to obviously assign IP addresses now that I've got the topology or the network set up. So what I'm gonna see is, I can see that on our switch ports here connected to our hosts, the interface has come up. In other words, the interface is live, it's working, it's not shut down. However, on the interfaces between the switch and the router on both sides, you can see that this red kind of um, triangle in this down state basically specifies that these ports are shut down. And this is the defaults when it comes to routers on a network. When we basically add them to our network, we have to enable these interfaces. But before we do that, guys, what I wanna do is I wanna put IP addresses on my hosts. So I need to, before I, do, I, I put on the IP addresses and subnet masks, a good idea is to think about what IP address am I gonna use for each of these hosts' default gateway. In other words, it's door out of the network. So in this case, I might say, okay, for this particular computer, I might say, I'm gonna put in the IP address 192.168.1. Let's say 10, for example. That's an available address on this network, okay? Also, when I press the tab, you'll notice that it auto-completes the subnet mask. But now here's my, um, my next field, the default gateway. What am I gonna choose? So a lot of network administrators will choose the first available IP address on a subnet to be the default gateway. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that, um, that same addressing scheme. So I'm gonna put 192.168.1.1. Who's gonna have the address of 1.1 in this particular case? Well, we're gonna see that this particular interface here on the router will get that address. So what I'm gonna to need to do is I'm gonna to need to go and specify gig zero slash zero. The IP here is going to be 192.168.1.1. And basically, so when I come back to my PC here now in a moment, let's click on this PC here, I can now put in the default gateway as I can see, I already put it in. So now that's, that's a good sign. 
Also what I need to do is I need to do something similar with the other PC in this case. So again, what I could do is I'm gonna go desktop, IP configuration, use static IPs here is fine for the moment. So again, now this case I can't use .10 and I can't use .1, why? They're being used on the network. 10 is being used for my friend PC0 and one is being used for my interface on my router. So what I'm gonna use is I'm gonna choose .11. I'm gonna hit the tab and you can see that again, why did it pick up that this has got a 255.255.255.0 subnet? Well, it's picked that up because Again, remember, this is a class C um, address. It begins with 192, which falls into that band of class C addresses. And it knows that any class C addresses will have this default subnet mask of slash 24. So I'm also gonna need to put in the default gateway. So 1.1. So now that I've done that, guys, what I'll be able to see is I'll be able to obviously communicate between these two computers. So for example, if I wanted to give this a try, what I could do is I could go to the simulation mode and what I could do is I could actually try to ping this machine from PC0 to PC1. To do that, I can go to this computer, go to command prompt, and what I could do is a simple ping. Now before I do that, I wanna just show you something, guys. If I use the command ARP A, which basically shows me the ARP or the addressing um, table. So this is the mappings between IP addresses and MAC addresses. What we'll see is this is empty. So at this moment in time, it doesn't know about PC1's MAC address, this layer two address that it needs to have in order to communicate between any two devices. So as I can see here, it's got no ARP entries found. So what, I, what I'll do now is I'll be able to ping 192.168 1.11 in this case. And what I'll see is before I can send what's called an ICMP request out of the network, it will have to first ARP for my friend PC1. Shout out to the whole network. Hello everyone, I'm looking for the MAC address for 192.168.1.11. And this will go out uh, using what's called a broadcast. So everyone on this network, if there was more computers connected here, that broadcast would go out all ports but the only one that should be responding to this is PC1. And what PC1 will come back and say, hey, I'm actually IP address 192.168.1.11, here is my MAC address. And then once it has its MAC address, it'll put it into its ARP table, and then it will be able to send a message directly to PC1 using its IP addressing at layer three and its layer two information, i.e. its MAC addressing. So let's look at this process. So when I press enter, we're in simulation mode we'll actually see this process step by step. So again, once I press enter, here it comes. We've got the ICMP message in black here, and we've got a green ARP message. So if I click on this ARP message, look what it's showing, guys. It's saying in the outbound side, it's basically saying I've got a source MAC, and that's my own computer of PC0, but then it's got a destination MAC of all zeros. So it's basically saying, hey, I don't know this target, basically MAC address at the moment and it's gonna send this out to the network. It also knows, obviously, its own IP address, its source IP, and it knows the destination IP address. That's the ping message that I'm sending. So what's gonna happen with this? This is gonna go out, basically a broadcast message to the switch, and the switch would send this out to all ports. Now, because there's no other ports, this one's switched off and there's no other ports, it's only gonna get sent out to this other port for the time being. But if I added more, basically, um, ports or more computers, other computers would receive this also. But the only one that's gonna respond is gonna be our friend PC1. So our friend PC1, what will it do? It will send back an ARP response to basically say, hey, you were looking for my MAC address, I'm gonna send it to you. So if I close that window and look at basically this envelope, what we'll actually see is we'll see the MAC address coming back. So in this case, we'll see, oh, the source MAC address that you can see is coming from CEE6. Okay, so that's PC1's MAC address of its network interface card. So once this comes back, this CEE6, what will happen is the, the PC will go, oh, thank you very much. I didn't know your MAC address. Now what I can do is I can send you this ICMP response. So in here now, guys, you can see there's no response back from ICMPs yet, but now 
that basically it's received the MAC address. They can, the PC0 can send that ICMP request. So off it goes. Now again, if I wanna look at this message, I'll be able to see the source MAC and the destination MAC. So let's have a look. So I can see, here we can see, this is coming from, um, in this case, I can see the source address. So here's the source address, that's basically PC0. And I can see the destination address, that's CEE6, so going to PC1. So this shows us that we've learned the information now. This is the layer two information. What protocol is this? This is using uh, the ethernet protocol, okay, at layer two. Also, I can see the IP at layer three, guys. So this is the TCP IP suite showing us here. So again, remember, I'm seeing the IP addresses at layer three. These are logical addresses. What are these addresses at layer two? These are called physical addresses. Okay, just to look at the logical addresses of the ICMP message, have a look at this. In the IP header, we can see it's coming from 1.10. It's going to a destination of 1.11. So as I can see here, guys, that's going to go to my PC1. At this moment in time, guys, look at this PC. It still hasn't received any response. So it's still waiting for its first request, uh, the response to come back. So we can just keep this in line here. Let's keep pressing play. So again, it hasn't come back as of yet, but once this message comes back, guys, I'll now get a response. So once this comes in, I'll be able to click on this computer and I'll be able to see, look at my first reply. So again, I'm seeing now that I've got one response from PC1. Okay, so again, what I'll also do is because using this ping protocol, I'll send actually four requests. These are called echo requests and I should get four replies back. So again, if I keep going next, next, next. So here comes the next ICMP. Off it goes and PC1 should reply. Once it comes back, what I should see is my next uh, reply message. So I can see this is going to happen four times, guys. So, so far, so good, guys. So again, this, you might see some other traffic here, this STP, spanning tree protocol. This will happen during, you know, STP is working continuously in the background. This is to ensure that there's no loops. But what I can do is I can keep fast forwarding. You'll see that the ICMP messages will continue and continue until we get four, basically, replies back. Okay, so I'll send four and I'll get four responses back. And then at the, the end of this, I'll get a little summary. So if I go in here, I can see now, guys, I've actually got four responses. So again, four replies from my, from in this case, PC1. So that's the R process, this address resolution process. So again, remember, with this, I didn't need to go outside my network. My computer knew that this computer was basically on the same network as me. How did it know? Because when it went to send a ping, it said, oh, are you on the 192.168.1 network? And the answer to that question was, yes, it was. So the only thing it needed to do then was, it needed to say, hey, give me your MAC address. Once it had the MAC address, what can it say? It can say, oh, great, now I can send directly ping messages to you. You might remember when I went into earlier on, when I used that command ARP, minus A, you can see before I sent the ping, it didn't have any entries. If I use that command again, ARP A, what will it see? It will see that it's got a mapping between the IP address here, 1.11, and its MAC address. So again, you know, you might say, how could I prove that, Greg? Well, again, remember, if I go over here to PC1, I can find out this information. And again, this works for any Windows PC. If I do an IP config, Okay, I can see, and let's make this a little bit bigger so we can actually see this clearer. So if I go here, I can see at the moment, I can see some information. I can see the IP address, I can see the subnet mask, and I can see the default gateway. So that's all relevant information to PC1. But if I wanted to find the physical address, the MAC address, I could also use, I could expand this command. I could go IP config space, and the space is very important. It won't work if you don't have this space in. And I can go forward slash all. And what this will do is it will show me more information. And the more information that I'm interested in, in this particular case is, I'm looking to see the physical address. So have a look, this is the physical address or the MAC address of this particular PC, in this case, PC1. And you see it ends in CEE6. And again, that relates back to my PC0. Again, have a look at that, the mapping there between the IP address and the MAC address. So again, I use that ARP process to find this out. So what we're gonna do here, guys, is we're gonna stop 
at this point. So to, at this point, I've set up a simple network. I've configured my IP addresses on just this LAN here. I've shown this internal or this local area networking working now at this stage so that PC0 can ping PC1. It did that using this ART process. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in our second part and I'm going to configure, if you like, the router and I'm also going to configure this LAN2 or this network2 to have IP addresses. And what we'll see is we'll see the communication going across the network to these other computers. Okay, thanks for joining me guys and um, hopefully see you in the next video. Thanks guys.